Okay, this is not quite locomotive works. <laughs> if, uh, I had some real doubts as to whether or not to even review this. But, let me explain what's going on. Uh, first of all, if you're looking for a review of locomotive works, rules as written, this ain't it. Uh, I may play it again at some point, but not right away. By the rules. But in this case, I found an inadvertent or accidental variant that I think I like a great deal. Now, this was my first time playing it solo. I played it once with my wife. Made some assumptions on the rules that, uh, that were wrong, you know. And so I'm going to kind of go through that briefly. But what, what does the game share with the regular game? First of all, most of the rules have got the same. The components are well done, the cards, etc. Um, there may be actually too few dice for some games of it, but that's not a big deal. Everybody's got dice or you can use counters or something else to handle things. The rule book came with two copies of German rules. Uh, this was the Kickstarter edition, and it did not come with any rules for the Saxonia card. I wrote back to to uh, Queen Games, this is their edition, and you know, within a week I had a copy of, uh, of the English rules. I didn't know I needed the Saxonia cards, but I was able to find the rules for that online. I think that's the Kickstarter bonus, and I don't really want to go too much into it. Uh, the game was sealed when I bought it but I got it on the second-hand market. Somebody, you know, picked it up and decided, eh, I, don't, I don't really want to own this. Or maybe thought they could make money off of it in Kickstarter. I don't know. I don't know how, what motivates people. The board is nice, but largely uh, you don't need this much space. The center area of the board is just to hold chips, and these things are really all you need is this track of trains and I'm told the original went completely in sequential order and it was just a straight line track uh, of if I can fold this of what the uh, uh, of the uh, chronological order that you need. Okay. The rule book itself is filled with all kinds of annoying color and I'm going to beg off and say that, simple as these rules are, the choice to put important information into the examples that I don't read, <laughs> because, you know, I'm just not interested in reading this extraneous text unless I feel like I don't understand, rather than say warnings about common mistakes or something like that um, perhaps contributed to my mistake but really what it came down to was I just read more into the rules than there is uh, however I did miss another rule in here having to do with uh, I was actually questioning this one as I read it uh, having to do with whether or not the dice are always re-rolled and they're not if they stay in the existing orders uh, they just stay there and they actually don't dissolve they don't die they, they they are things people are still interested in they're not regenerated which has a couple of factors uh, one of which is it can depress the demand but another is it can maintain demand for it if you don't supply that demand so it stays for a long time at least until more trains okay so the core mechanics of the game are pretty simple, and I like that. The game that I played of it allowed for tremendously big decisions in the game. A lot of risk management in the sense that if you guess wrong about your production, you could get essentially knocked out. That If you guess reasonably well and get a terrible die roll, it can hurt you. 
if you guess very risky and get a lucky die roll, it could help you a great deal. So luck begins to play a bigger factor in the game as I played it. However, who wants to lose? So you want to play kind of conservatively. The unfortunate thing is if someone else plays risky, they could sink you based on the die rolls. Just something to keep in mind there. Uh, the original game allows for a lot of little decisions to move things continuously up the train track, uh, uh, up the production schedule. Every more modern train you can always tool up to. I think that would be a nightmare for me. I think I would be looking at what everybody could possibly do everywhere at all times and it would throw me, if not into analysis paralysis, into and I, so by one meaning of analysis paralysis, I would be taking forever on my turns. That is a guarantee. The question is whether or not it would reach the limit of what I can handle and I'd start pathologically thrashing <laughs> or whether I would be making good progress. And that I think depends on my mood on the day or whatever. No matter what though, I'd have a miserable time constantly trying to assess the current state of the game. It's possible that one could be able to just assess that information very quickly, like in a Go game. But I find that difficult uh, to do in games with lots of numerical values in it. I tend to try to spreadsheet it all out in my head and figure out exactly what I can do best and what I can not afford to risk and stuff like that. Which is the primary reason that I like the version that I play. The version that I played says you can only upgrade along your own color line. So if you buy a green train, you can only upgrade, and it, this was completely accidental. I mean, it was my misreading of the rules. My wife and I played it. I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, she felt like there were too many, kind of too many decisions already. Um, and she definitely would hate all those little decisions spread out. For me, though, what I saw was a very, very clean game that required very, a lot of mechanical, almost, decisions. Or simple ones, you know, along the lines of, do I want to buy, you know, do I want to spend money on blowing through that mountain in an 18xx game? Simple in that sense, in that, do I want to upgrade these trains right now? Uh, you have a very clear objective in your mind, which is to minimize your cash on hand because you get taxed on that and maximize your potential income in the future. But there's a lot of little fluid uh, pieces to that, but they're ones you don't have to sit there and calculate completely. And that's kind of the problem that I have with what I see as the game as written is that you would have to calculate out what every player's best move is in order to figure out, you know, or best choices are, in order to figure out what your own are. And then, if you're going early in the turn. If you're going late in the turn, you just look at the board, the tableau, and you figure out, hey, yeah, I want to, I want to, you know, fill in, in these spaces. This is what I want to do. That would be very opportunistic and simple. Of course, you have very little control going late in the turn. You're just trying to ooze into the cracks. But it makes it easier to ooze into the cracks. So one of the things I saw in my variant was it was really easy to get stuck in a position where you had nothing you could do to bring some of your production online. You couldn't buy another, uh, another, end, another factory, and you couldn't shift your production to factories where there was more demand <clears throat> because you had the color limits. But it brought some interesting big strategic decisions to the game, which maybe aren't that interesting if you play it enough, but to me they were, of, wow, what colors do I want to play in? <laughs> Those are the kind of decisions like, what corporation do I want to buy in an 18xx game? So to me this actually, although this was a stripped down, simpler game, it captured a lot of the things that made me love XX. Certain harshness. Hey, I'm going before you 
I'm gonna move into I'm gonna move my production into where your production is and you can't do a damn thing about it and you're screwed kind of like dumping a company on someone um, the question is can you protect yourself enough against that kind of behavior can you protect yourself enough against the dice and I'm not sure about those factors I think you can I think that you can play carefully enough that they will still be a big factor but not a determining factor on who wins. I don't think luck is going to be the major thing in, in my variant. Uh, so anyway, if you have this game and dislike it for the kind of reasons that I suspect I would dislike it, if you find yourself disliking those very... I have eight billion choices sitting in front of me type decisions and I feel like I can calculate it all out ahead of time. If you dislike games along those lines, yet like games with big strategic decisions, and you own this already, you may want to give this variant a try. It, 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 does, uh, it does shake things up completely, I'm sure. Now, I wouldn't suggest buying Locomotive Works on unless you see it real cheap, on my uh, recommendation of this uh, variant at all. You know, obviously the base game has been finely tuned. You know, the fact that they could come to this idea of changing the start position for three and four players, although, of course, you know, what do I care about finely tuned? I played it in two. Uh, that they could uh, convert the start position for three and four players and say, you know... Everybody starts with a train in three and four players, and there's already starting demand. Why? Well, one reason is they didn't have enough trains in five to provide it to the a train to every person. But you know, um, there's something interesting to be said there. As to the Saxonia variant, this is kind of cool. It's this little twist to the game that gives what is potentially the most important advantage up for bid, which is I get to go first for a long time. How long is questionable? It's until the next, uh, until the level two green train comes up. I do have some issues with components, actually. Uh, we'll talk about it. I thought there should be numbers for more numbers available for these to cover more of the dice span. I'm not sure why, because making change is kind of a bitch, and actually having these back printed is kind of a bitch. Uh, most of them being twos would work kind of well too. Uh, the there's a space around the cards issue where when you drop numbers down below the card or whatever you want to do to take them off, they could get confused. I flip them over accidentally and I'm not sure what I'm doing, but you know, shit happens in a game, right? Um, and then there was something else that I wanted to, to touch on with that same, with the same bend. Oh yeah. The choice of the levels on the trains, let me show you here. So they've got these level numbers here. I guess those are useful in terms of maintaining the age of the different trains, but it gets kind of confusing when you're looking here and you see, oh, it's a level three train and then it goes down to a level two train. That's just a little bothersome to me. I'm sure you get used to it with enough plays. But if you were playing that you could shift anywhere, as the rules say, that's a higher technology, later technology on the track, um, it's not as obvious. What, what I had was very, very obvious. You could look and say, ah, I'm shifting from level one up to level three. That's clearly allowed. But that's not how the, um, the board itself is arranged. The board itself has these, you know, jumping places, level two, level three, level two, and then over here level three, level four, level three, uh, that could kind of confuse someone like me pretty easily. But yeah, uh, you know, I don't want to say I'm going to hate the game as written, but, and I probably will give it a real coverage at some point, but I don't 
feel up to it right now. Um, basically, I have a certain tolerance for playing a game like this or an 18xx or whatever, and I don't usually want to play one again right away. There's a fatigue factor to it. Towards the end of this game, it gets a little busy. At the first half of the game is pretty simple, but as you get towards the end, the decisions start getting more complicated and snowballing, much like an XX or a lot of other games where more options are available to you. Um, and that, that's part of what worries me. I think there's a lot... Of, for the base game, I think there's a humongous amount of interesting decisions for little rules. You're getting that really good payoff there, if you like the kind of decisions that there are. But I can't speak any more of it <laughs> on that because, uh, you know, I haven't played by the real rules. I've played by something kind of twisted. Uh, and I, I, I do like the stripped down clean version of it, uh, the clean feeling of it, but I, I really am worried about just the number of decisions this is going to spawn that you have to keep track of for every player. And I've got strange yellow stones on my table. I wonder if they clean off. They do not seem to. This may be permanent from when I found it. Okay. Up it goes.